Bonjour everyone, welcome to another Diecast Showcase. Uh, so yep, basically in today's episode I'm going to be sharing with you a, um, a few uh, 143 scale models that I have. Um, and uh, the theme that I chose in regards to the selection of vehicles I'm going to present to you will be some Italian vehicles. Um, so basically we'll have uh, a few different brands, a few different diecast manufacturers. Um, and of course we'll have uh, a few different eras of cars as well basically um, that we'll go through. Um, I decided to go by brand as opposed to by era or something like that, by car manufacturer, not necessarily by diecast manufacturer, although it ended up being that way as well. So, um, yeah, so without further ado, let's get a, give this a start. First one I'm going to show you today will be uh, a vehicle that's uh, fairly familiar to automotive enthusiasts and has been probably for the past five years in North America. So we're talking about... The Alfa Romeo Giulia. So this specific one uh, is made by Burago. Um, so we're talking about something that's extremely, uh, extremely affordable. If we're talking about uh, the price uh, in Canada, these are about seven bucks each Canadian, um, on average. Maybe a dollar cheaper some places, a dollar more expensive uh, other places. So fairly cheaply made. Um, these are basically uh, snapped together as opposed to being screwed uh, screwed together. Um, you know, plastic base, very cheap wheels, um, but uh, still has uh, lensed features and fair amount of accurately placed detail, uh, namely the grills that are very well reproduced, uh, including here you have a, a little bit of a, uh, an indentation in the... Uh, in the uh, passenger side lower grille for the bumper, which would be the um, the uh, camera and uh, um, adaptive cruise control uh, unit. Um, oh, apologies about that. Somebody's launching fireworks again. So uh, this specific model, if I base myself on the exhaust, you'll see there's just a uh, uh, twin single uh, exit exhaust. We are talking about a uh, base 2 liter turbo model, which have about 280 horsepower, uh, as opposed to the Quadrifoglio, which would have a quad exhaust, uh, wider wheel arches, and a more aggressive bumper with extra um, extra cooling vents uh, uh, for the brakes. Um, nevertheless, lensed uh, headlights throughout. You can see that the Alpha logo uh, on the trunk lid is very well rendered and proportioned. This is a windows closed model, so we do get a little bit of a glimpse at the, you know, fairly basic black interior. Uh, but these do come with a fairly basic black interior on the get-go. Again, apologies for the fireworks there. So um, you've got the tiny, tiny little um, integrated uh, lip spoiler on the trunk lid. Uh, no, uh, no additional. Um, carbon fiber extension of that specific one. Uh, there's no uh, uh, four-leaf clover symbol on the front fender, so yeah, not a quadrifolio, and doesn't seem really to be a s uh, sport model or a TI sport model, like basically the uh, sportiest version, so it's probably not a Luso either, so it's probably just a sport as opposed to a TI sport. Um, the wheels, even though they're pretty generic, are actually pretty close to uh, one of the models that are offered on these vehicles, especially the uh, 2019 Plus. So, But uh, nevertheless, very cool vehicle. Very cool vehicle. Um, place this one here. And um, uh, out of the same, uh, same era, same range, same everything, basically. Um, the, at the other spectrum of the... Uh, well, not really the other spectrum but let's just say the other big seller out of the alpha range would be this one here the uh alpha romeo stelvio and this is definitely a quadrifolio version um uh, namely um recognizable as mentioned before that little four leaf clover symbol on the front fender um, 
the uh, hood vents, which are definitely a telltale, and the more aggressive split lower air intakes in the bumper, which do include this extra vent for brake ducts and brake cooling. Uh, familiar front end, both of them look, uh, you know, follow the same styling cues, obviously. Again, a black interior. You can see that uh, this one would be equipped with the fixed back sports seats. Definitely not the most comfortable, but hey, if you want to track your Stelvio Quadrifoglio, which some owners definitely do. Um, again, apologies there. Good feature to have. Here we do have, as you can see, the quad exhausts that are slightly uh, slanted, um, which is another telltale that this is a Quadrifoglio. Um, let's see, what else could we spot there? You'll see that uh, the badge on the driver's side is the Q4 badge indicating all-wheel drive, not present on the Julia. Uh, in the States, I believe the, the rear-wheel drive version is offered. In Canada, this is not all uh, uh, Julias except for Quadrifolios are all all-wheel drive with the Q4 system. So it's a really nice blue. It does look a lot like the Monte Carlo blue. Um, smidgen darker maybe but uh, close enough uh, and the wheels again you know look I won't even comment on them they're very basic not as noticeable from this angle since they're black but you know as you tilt them towards the light you can see that these are extremely cookie cutter wheels um, almost looks like there's no tire on them which it's, you know it is what it is, you know. Again, these are uh, six, seven, eight dollars, so you can't really you get what you pay for, right? Um, last Burago, I'm going to show you now that the last Alfa Romeo as well, uh, which may not be as familiar. Um, this would be the um, Alfa Romeo 159 wagon. I may or may not have shown this in an alternate video, but. Uh, I'll give you a quick uh, backstory on this model. Let's just back these up a smidgen there. There we go. So yeah, let me uh, give you a quick backstory on this car. So basically, the front end styling is probably the most striking part of this car. Um, so you'll see that there's tiny lens, three tiny round lensed portions of this front light. Um, this was based on the Alfa Romeo Brera concept of, I believe, 2000, oh, even probably earlier, maybe 97, 98, uh, and it dictated for a while the front end of uh, these cars, uh, styling-wise, uh, be it the uh, 159 Sport Wagon that we see here that replaced the 156, uh, in a, in a, well, the sedan, obviously, and uh, the spider version, the convertible version as well. And there was a very handsome coupe uh, as well. Uh, well, actually, more of a have like a coupe hatchback kind of thing. Um, and uh, that was definitely, uh, definitely the star, in my opinion, of the range. Now, this one does not have lensed rears. It has painted rears. Um, yeah, we got the license plates and... Uh, the license plate in the back at least and we've got the same wheels as on the julia again they do resemble a little bit alpha wheels so on the black uh, on the black car like this it looks really good little touches of chrome here and there just to liven up the uh very glossy black paint horrible rear visibility i can imagine um but nevertheless a nice sporty nice 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 sporty wagon nice profile these were available in Excellent turbo diesels, four cylinder to I believe a 2.4, the JTD. There is also um, a twin spark four cylinder version and uh, the 3.2 liter V6 version. V6 that actually found its way into, uh, believe it or not, the 2016 plus Jeep Cherokee. Uh, or as uh, example, the Dodge Journey. Uh, would have the 3.6 liter Pentastar V6 that's applied to pretty much every single GM model, almost. Uh, GM model, sorry, Mopar model, almost. So yeah, uh, both Fiat, uh, Fiat both owns Chrysler Corp as well as Alfa Romeo. 
amongst many other brands. So we do have a little bit of mix and match. We got some Fiats and pretty much a whole bunch of Chryslers uh, today. So yeah, the 3.2 liter top spec optional engine in this car is indeed the same engine that is in the um, six cylinder Cherokee. So little tidbit of knowledge, more or less useful, but you know, cool fact nevertheless. All right. Um, so now that we've gone through our, uh, our, uh, you know, Burago, uh, you know, Hot Wheels premium priced Burago here, uh, range of cars or range of alphas. Uh, and these are true 143 scale, by the way. So if ever, um, we're going to go to something definitely a little bit more upscale. <clears throat> and this is going to be a a uh, model that is by uh, Granny and Partners. Uh, not Granny and and Y, but G A R N I and Partners. I'll show you the base first, so you can get a take a look at that. Oh boy, there we go. So, Granny and Partners S P A. Um. Yeah, so Fiat Dino 2000 Coupe from 1967. And this is a car that I absolutely do love. This later inspired actually the uh, Isuzu 117 Coupe out of Japan um, that started uh, maybe four or five years after this car was released. Uh, so pretty much when the Dino was being discontinued in the early 70s, uh, Isuzu in the mid 70s release its 117 coupe uh well pretty much at the same time basically as this was discontinued and uh that continued on until uh yeah, pretty much the early 80s honestly until the uh, piazza came out in 81 or here uh, known as the impulse which may ring a bell to people that are uh in their late 30s early 40s maybe uh, a little bit older uh, so yeah this is a very cool uh, Bertone design um, fastback the uh, and there is a spider version that exists as well and that was styled by uh, I believe Pininfarina actually so this one has really good detail you can see that all the lights are lensed and very well color uh, match to what you would see on the real car you've got a little bit of black on the exhaust exits which gives it a little bit more depth the uh, period Italian plates on the back the wheels are extremely well rendered if we're talking about um, the one for one equivalent and uh, we do have a lot of separate parts, basically, namely the chrome bumpers, the grill with the uh, front lights that are lensed as well, a tiny, tiny little version of the Italian plate on the front, separate wipers, uh, blacked out grills uh, in the middle of that um, the hood that actually, I believe, opens uh, frontwards as opposed to... Uh, front to back um yeah i really like the style of this especially the early ones like this the uh later um later versions were actually um bored out to 2.4 liters this was a v6 and it's actually the same v6 as you would have found in the lancia stratos in the dino 246 or the dino 206 the prototype for the dino 246 that actually had the same two liter that would be in this one. These put out about 150 to 160 horsepower, uh, which was a decent amount. Um, whereas in the Dino and the Stratos, they uh, they actually put out 190 within the in the 2.4 liter form. So a nice classic Italian uh, car. Nice contrast to the ones that uh, we checked out just before that are much more modern of uh, this millennia, basically. Um, so let's take a little trip 15 years into the future after this Dino and let us check out a beautiful um, Ixo Models casting uh, of 
of a car that is hated by many, loved by very few, but in retrospect, quite uh, defining of its era. So we are talking about the Maserati Biturbo in a nice shade of super dark glossy brown, which, you know, defines the uh, 1982-ness of uh, this specific model. So this is a model by Ixo, so not super duper mini champs uh, type and auto art type quality, but it's, it's just a slight run underneath, in my humble opinion at least. So a uh, very, very cool car. Um, I actually bought this one, if ever you checked out my other um, my other uh, video, diecast video uh, for 143s, uh, showing off some 90s uh, cars that I have in my collection. Um, I did purchase this at the same time as uh, the Maserati Quattroporte Evo that I showed off there. Um, and um, the that that other Maserati was the same brand as the uh, Dino we just checked out. Uh, this one is uh, honestly pretty much flawless as a rendering. Very cool as well. That uh, again, as with the Dino, the, this these have the um, period Italian plates. This one seemingly based in Rome. See the little piece, a little chunk of that seemingly that's missing. It's kind of a shame, but. We do have a bigger and easier legible plate in the back, so why don't we just start there? Maserati badge, very well sized. The uh, by Turbo script um, exhaust is again well done. A little touch of black in the middle to give a little bit more depth. We've got the full spare tire that's under here as well, matching the rest exhaust system diff drive shaft up to the transmission is done over here unfortunately not you can see this one is, this one is assembled with screws so should be fairly easy to take apart if ever one would need to i'll give you a little look at the base uh you can see the ixo badge right there or a brand right there 143 scale so very nice car well rendered um in pretty much every aspect. I've seen a few of these uh, in real life and uh, honestly, this is impossible to flaw. It's just scaled down uh, 43 times smaller than the original. Um, love the badge, the badge that's embossed uh, almost into the uh, C pillar. Oops, sorry about that. Just got out of focus there. There we go. And another thing I really love is the interior that's really, really well rendered. Try and get a nice shot of that. All the textures are there, and these Maseratis at the time were known for their two-tone leather interiors with a lot of wood, and that is fantastically rendered in here. So that's pretty much the best I'll be able to show you, but you can see basically you've got uh, the, um, the instruments that are uh, inside the cluster. You've got the two-tone steering wheel. This is a manual. This would have been with a five speed. Uh, and um, yeah, basically the light beige interior. If we take a look here, we'll probably get a different view, maybe even a better view. There we go. You've got the radio and the, the HVAC controls that are all done. You've got the mirrors with the uh, reflective finish. And uh, oh boy. Yeah, reflective but not focused. There we go. So yeah, this is a really, really well rendered little uh, piece of kit. And really like it. And this car actually is the inspiration. And you may see, you may see it once uh, I mention this, but this was the inspiration behind the final rendition of the E30 BMW. Just uh, make those uh, square lights round and uh, replace the grills with the BMW kidneys. Once you see it right. So, there you go. I believe this was a Marcelo Gandini design. Uh, 
correct me if I'm wrong in the comments there. I could be wrong, but I believe there is. Definitely, yeah. All right, next up, um, we'll try and not do uh, the opening scene from the Italian job, but uh, here we go. This is, I believe, the epitome of style icon. If we're talking to, if we're talking about automobiles, um, right up there with the uh, Jag E type, um, in my humble opinion, at least. A Lamborghini, a Lamborghini Mura. This is a base Mura, uh, in an interesting uh, color combination. So, well, yeah, the yellow is pretty, you know, pretty regular for a Lamborghini. What I like though is the fact that it has the silver wheels. But the gold lower body cladding, which normally are not, well, not commonly seen on the same car. Either the wheels are going to be, the wheels are normally color coded with the lower body, but this has been seen though. It has been specked out by clients at the time in this kind of configuration with the uh, gold lower body and the uh, silver wheels. You'll see the Bertone badge. Uh, on the uh, uh, I'd say side of the car, I guess. I don't know if that's a lower body panel because this thing is so low slung. Uh, you've got the um, infamous front end with the eyelashes, as they are referred to, around the uh, front lights. Uh, front lights that do uh, pop out uh, a la bug eye, kind of like a uh, Porsche 928 or whatnot. Uh, you've got also um, Lamborghini badging, no mirrors, and you'll notice also on the uh, Fiat, there's also no mirrors as well, but mirrors were actually a factory option and were not part of standardized and mandatory safety equipment at the time of these vehicles being produced, both of which would be, I believe, in 1967. Uh, so this is a Del Prado model. Actually, no, this is a 68. 66? 66. All right. But either way, pretty much the same time. But yeah, this is a Del Prado. Del Prado is very affordable. Not many of their models are over 20 bucks, honestly. But as you can see, it's well done, well rendered, true scale. Look at that rear. I mean, it looks fantastic. And even if the badging actually looks big, it was extremely big on the real car as well. Maybe not the Lamborghini script on the driver's side, but on passenger side, uh, passenger side the Mura uh, scripture, it's pretty much the same size as you would find on the real car. So lens features all around. I love these. Uh, this is very, very, very period, very 60s. Uh, the slats on the rear uh, engine cover. Um, yeah, and this opened up as a clamshell. It's pretty much the first mid-engine supercar that was produced for the road so very very cool model we got a nice little lineup going here i'm going to show you two more models and these ones are actually still on their bases respectively we'll start off with my favorite iteration of the uh lamborghini diablo since we were looking at lamborghinis and this would be it we'll take the, this nice little cover off do keep this one in the acrylic case to not get too much dust on it. And here it is. The SC30 Diablo in that lilac metallic. Mind you, the uh, original color on this is definitely a shade lighter. Um, but you know what? That's not a big deal. Um, you can see we are missing a mirror, which I never noticed up to now, which is kind of a shame. We do have a mirror on that side. Yeah, well, either way, still, it's a nice model. Um, yeah, I'm really disappointed about that mirror, though. Either way. So we've got the uh, Diablo rear end here. Um, not much to say. I mean, uh, as you'd expect with 143, you know, full detail, lens to features. Even those tiny little rear lights under here are lens. Um these are painted though and uh let's check on the side that has its mirror ah oh, such a shame for that mirror either way the phone dial wheels classic classic lamborghini 
Um, and you'll also notice um, on these, the bumper was a little bit different. Uh, the uh, indicators and fog lights are more recessed. The front lip is more pronounced as well. Um, love the Lamborghini logo embossed in the front bumper. The big, big issue is really that mirror. Uh, also, uh, maybe I find that the harnesses are a little bit too glossy. I would have probably tried to, tried to put some matte clear on that instead of just doing everything glossy because they don't really pop out except in color. And you'll also notice that it's written Yota. So Yota was like a optional um, power adder kits basically that you could get on these. So standard Diablo had 492 horsepower. Uh, these uh, started off at 525. And with the Yota power adders, we could go up to 575. So adding an extra 50 horsepower, you know, with natural, uh, naturally aspirated motor mods, literally, um, you know, very, uh, these were factory back kits. And um, yeah, there's, um, Yota is a name that does come up a lot in uh, Lamborghini history. Uh, speaking of history, last but definitely not least, at least in my humble opinion, I'm going to be looking at a Lamborghini concept car. I'm going to push this one over just a bit for now. So Lamborghini Bravo, another Bertone um, uh, exercise in uh, style. Uh, we're talking about 1974 Turin Motor Show um, uh, appearance of this model. Uh, that was based on the Lamborghini Uraco Silhouette uh uh, Yalpa, uh, that line of car, basically the V8 man engined uh, cars that were meant to uh, um, compete with the Ferrari 308, 328, 348, 355, so on and so forth, all the way up to today with the uh, four, uh, 488. Um, yeah, let's check this one out a little bit more in detail. This one, the packaging is a little bit more complete. So these did come originally with a uh, um, a backing on the card. And you get a little bit of specs for the uh, for the vehicle as well. So if you want to freeze frame that and check out all the specs, um, let's see, you're gonna take this uh, clear case off the car. There we go. And let's give it a closer look. So this was really during the wedge shape. You'll notice here there's a little bit of a factory defect. The uh, two pieces of the body are not quite as flush as they should be if you compare to the other side. But I love the fact that the original wheels of this are retained from the car that it is based on. Sorry, the tire's a little bit off whack there. There we go. That's better. Uh, again, the Bertone script. So many cool ink slots on there. This is very, very 70s. Very 70s, and I love this. These were like the designs I used to love when I was a kid. Like, uh, you know, seven, eight, nine years old. Uh, there's so many uh, really cool prototypes from that era from a bunch of manufacturers. It was just a style that... Uh, I mean, yeah, it's just cool to look at it. I mean, the thing looks like a spaceship from from above, so. And that color, I mean, this kind of like gloss beige, you know. Uh, very, very cool car. So, yeah, I wanted to show you that. Here's the rear end. That uh, very 70s Bravo script. Lensed everything. That uh, twin uh, exhaust jutting and just jutting up. No mirrors on this one either, but most concept cars didn't at the time. So there we go. So that's pretty much the vehicles I wanted to show you today. So make a little backdrop like this for you to see everything. Oh boy, sorry about that. Yeah, there we go. That looks good. 
All right, so uh, if you enjoyed uh, this little showcase, a little bit uh, different, uh, but uh, yeah, uh, I collect many scales, so I'll try to vary it up a little bit, you know, make sure that the uh, content stays fresh. Um, you know, let me know which, which out of these was your favorite. Um, you know, uh, you guys uh, like Italian cars, which, which is your favorite country of origin for European vehicles? Um, yeah, I'll um, I hope uh, to uh, see you uh, on the next one. Um, like, share, subscribe, comment, uh, and uh, thanks for uh, for tuning in if it's your first visit. Thanks for uh, tuning back in if it's a repeat visit. Um, I'll wish you a great uh, rest of your morning, afternoon, evening, night, wherever you are, and uh, I will... Uh, See you on the next one. Take care.